Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion 360 and a small exercise to the left. Let's zoom in a bit, this is from Too Tall Toby's uh, YouTube channel, I put a link down below, he posts some practice models now and then, mostly aim at his little competition in speed modeling. But you can also do this just like interesting uh, exercises and it gives you a final uh, mass you should uh, hit but you have to remember if you do this in fusion uh you know, total is using solidworks i don't know if these are the built-in materials but the materials if you find plain carbon steel with infusion it will not have the same density so if you get some numbers wrong so you need to set up your own materials but anyway let's have a look at this um he has a small hint up here let's move in hint uh use of the sketch entities and yes we can do offsets in sketch in fusion too but fusion uh offset sketch it has some really big limitations let's have a look at that i'm simply going to start drawing the bottom down here i'm going to make a line with an arc so the aim of my work thinking in this workflow stop line command uh i'm going to make the second arc over here like that uh, my idea is this is like a pipe so I want to draw the center line so I made like the center line over here and now I'll make an offset let's make then a construction line of these sketch curves and I'm gonna make those uh, the diameter is six so I'm gonna make those three kind of flip it over like that yes so we have that with an offset of three that's the radius of a pipe because the diameter is six yeah, good uh, the dimensions here are now given because they are 21 let's zoom in this is given on the outside that's why i did the, why i did the offset i need the outside face of the pipe to do that so we're going to have a 21 dimension d for dimensions select our arc right click and do a radius that's correct and click and we get a warning over constraint sketch create driven dimensions you can create we can't dimension offset geometry this is limitation in fusion some call it a bug it's up to you when you call it but from my understanding this is one of the limitations you can have a look at the dimension here it has an arrow in one direction the same thing is if we hit offset once again i can't offset already offset geometry that doesn't work i need to select uh, what you call it, natural geometry, geometry made by me or some other thing. you can't use offset on offset geometry you could do a console like that so this limits my possibility otherwise i could draw like uh, the center line do some offset uh, entities needed for the pass i need to do mention that doesn't work so i need to rethink how i do this design uh, why i need to rethink it is you see how r21 is on the outside here or what i like to say call the right side we move over here but these two dimensions here those are on the left side of the pipe so we are jumping size you could do some couple different ways uh, but this is how i would do it zoom in the drawing so we can see the numbers uh, i like to use numbers from the drawing in my sketches i don't want to avoid doing a lot of calculations as i go back and i wonder why did i put in 21 minus 3 i want to put in 21 so what i will do i will do like a skeleton sketch with all these uh, round radius in the correct position uh, but i'll use circles they are also much easier to draw and do tangent constraints from so i'm going to start a sketch start with circle turn on construction geometry so i have one circle over here i have one here and then we have two here so i'm going to have one circle here and one up here something like that l for line I think I happen to get these two horizontal to each other. So I'm going to do this line here. I want the tangent constraint to the left here. So I'm going to hold down. You can see I do not get any tangent constraint. Now hold down the shift button and you get the tangent constraint. Move over here. Add a horizontal constraint to that. Do another line. I'm going to do a line from here up to here. Holding down shift to get the two tangent constraint. And add a vertical constraint. Or horizontal vertical like that. So now I got most of the basic constraints oh of course i'm going to make these two equal like that and i can hit d for dimension click on my circle of course it because it's a circles if you want to do a diameter dimension i right click change it to radius uh, this is supposed to be 21 let's do the one over here right click radius and uh, that is 19 this one up here right click do radius uh, and it's 27 the small line here 
is save the straight part is oh happened to move a mouse cursor outside of my window is 55 millimeters and the last one is oh there are two more dimensions we have one long here one long here that is going to be from tangent to tangent do right click select pick arc tangent or circle tangent that is 430 and we're going to have a dimension from oh i missed one constraint <laughs> let's add a midpoint so this fly line doesn't fly around open up a sketch we started to get things totally constrained and uh, once we're in d for dimension pick arc tangent from up here to down here move it out here is 235. i picked up all dimension i can find useful for this so we still have one degree of freedom for these these can move sideways these are constrained by the angles of this here but i will put those angles on the center line and then drive things from that so I avoid to draw everything at the same time because I will use tangent between arc and lines and stuff and tangent constraints and lines and arc can start flying around on the screen. So I will start by drawing the bottom part, part down here. Do a line, oops sorry, no longer construction, normal line, do a line over here, hold down the mouse button, get the arc, try and get the tangent constraint immediately here. Once again, L on the keyboard. If I start here now, I get the tangent arc, something like this. And a line here and make sure I get the tangent. If I don't get them, I can simply add the tangent constraints from the menu up here. Coincident between this point and here. This center point and here. Uh, it added the parallel constraint. There's a bit of a taste if we want to use parallel constraint. If we want to use uh, horizontal vertical. I think I select this. Hit delete and switch that to horizontal vertical constraints. D for dimension. And here's a dimension I might need to use multiple times. Or I know I need to use it multiple times. That is the diameter of uh, the pipe. But I really only need half of it. So I'm going to make a dimension here. I'm going to name it pipe R, the radius of a pipe. And that, of course, is 60. Oops, sorry. 6 divided by 2. That's free if you can do the math in your head, or you type it in now because I now have a number six somewhere within my parameters, I can find it again. So we're starting to get things constrained. You see the lines and arcs are starting to turn black. We have some angles, so let's add those. Here we have 26. Over here we have 25. You can see we still have to have a, the lines are turning black. It tells it it knows the direction, but it still doesn't have a length or anything. That's why the end point is white. So let's keep on drawing things now. L on the keyboard. Gonna make the arc upwards. Gonna make a line up. Make the arc over. I make a small line here. That small line is for this small spherical part here. I need that line extending beyond the arc. Shoo, let's see. Do we miss any constraints? We missed some tangent constraint here. We're going to need one here. We have a tangent here. We have tangent here. It's using some parallels just for fun of this. I'm going to delete that too. Use a horizontal vertical over here. We already have a horizontal vertical here. And now we can start adding some coincident constraint between this center point and here. And this center point and here. And we can see for some reason now, oh, mainly me clicking the wrong place, this uh, here is the outside that should be to the left. So we need to slightly drag this over until it moves to the correct side. D for dimension, these two here, and this is going to use our user parameter, pipe R. And of course, this line two also needs a three. You can see R3 in the sphere here. So dimension, this here, that's going to be our pipe are like that and we have almost a fully constrained sketch we have one point left is this here and that needs to be this point needs to be incident to that line and we have a fully constrained sketch where only we mean we are missing is the brace here so we're going to make a line from here to this could be put in a secondary sketch once again the parallel constraint we can keep it this time if you want to delete it make it horizontal whatever you want to do dimension from bottom here to here that's 110 and for some fun of it he is like uh, tutor toby has put in a driven dimension we call down here to check that things are correctly so we can do that one 
pick arc tangent from this arc here, the outside face, to the outside face here and down here. Create three dimension. We have 187.3759. So we have the same dimensions as in the drawing. This is just a reference or check dimension. And we got everything we need. We're going to finish. I'm going to do use pipe command. We can find it up here. Where are you? pipe command or you can use the s key and find it change selection of path the path is going to be all of this let fusion sync and the section size is going to be our pipe r but multiply by two because it's a radius new body yes hit okay and i'm going to apply the fillet the fillet is going to be on this edge here and that also is pipe r then go with spherical end. So now you can see why I extended with a line. If I didn't extend with line and stopped here and made the sphere, the sphere will be slightly above this point and not like in the drawing where it goes beyond the center line. And like that. And we have a small brace, of course. We're going to E for extrude. This here is going both directions. It's going to switch to symmetric, full width. And that was, uh, where are you? Two millimeter brace. So that's going to be two millimeter and we gonna do let's open up our bra so we have a body yes a new body let's do a join is that correct we have I always chosen the wrong thing here that one symmetric two millimeter join let's hit okay have a look hide the sketch so we can see things that looks quite good and as I said earlier now comes the material, so I'm going to do, are you going to modify physical material? Yes. I have set up materials for this. Let's fusion find material library. I have made a favorite library where I have some TTT materials for two Tobis materials, plain carbon steel, and I have set up these so they are correct in density and things. Right click our body and do our properties and we get 254.007 and if you look at the video at the end it has a this screen the exercise coat hanger is correct answer is 254 gram plus minus one and minus 254. So that's how I would make uh, let's go back to the drawing this exercise in Fusion 60. There might be faster ways. Please leave a comment on how much faster you can do this and maybe some other ways to do things. But as I said, open up a sketch, right click, show dimensions. You can see it's a bit messy. I'm going to move some dimensions. I just move that up there, that down there. You can see I'm using dimension that you can find directly within. Let's move it like that. I think of most things are, yeah, that's a bit messy, that one. It has to be there. It's three millimeter, I can move to the sign like that. All the mention you see in the sketch is from the drawing. Make it easier to go back and edit things if you need to change anything. So with that said, I hope you found some useful video. Take care, see you around, and goodbye.